All right, welcome everybody in the, to The Hub. I'm Nestor Leconto. Thanks for joining us. I don't think I need to introduce the guy sitting next to me. That's uh, former Governor Carl Guterres, who is yeah. also the president and CEO of uh, the Guam Visitors Bureau. We are also waiting for the Republican Party chairman, uh, Juan Carlos, who uh, I spoke to, and he is on our way. But uh, while we're waiting, um, there's a couple of topics maybe I'll, you can, you can sure. address. Um, so <laughs> just this week, uh, uh, the GHRA and the GTTA held a forum, and a couple of things that they wanted to talk about, or they did talk about, was uh, the need for an additional uh, LEAP assistance, yeah. the Local Employment Assistance Program. They're seeking mm. about uh, another th $36 million, yeah. and also um, more collaboration, I guess, with GVB yeah. as far as marketing, because um, I think uh, Mary Rhodes of GHRA mentioned that your budget is about $18 million, and um, they have... Um, um, multi-million dollar collectively that they'd like to put together and uh, have one message. Yeah. What are, well, what are your first of all, I, I, I think the, the whole affair, the whole affair for that thing was for them to kind of, uh, kind of, you know, dumb down the, the, the recovery so that they can make things as bleak as possible so they can get another leap. And uh, they have not been like advisors to GVB. They have been critics of GVB over the last several months. I think they organized themselves to be able to say, we're going to bring in a million tourists next year. How are you going to do that? Instead of working with us and know that GVB has the funds, has the, all the incentives that they can give out, they're trying to make it look like they're going to bring in a million tourists. It ain't going to happen. These people are not working with GVB. They're criticizing GVB. Each time they speak, they said, well, you know, we said we're going to bring in 400 to 600 million uh, thousand people. They said, oh, we're going to bring in a million. But then again, how come there's not too many airlines coming in? We're going to make, give, get more airlines to start flying in. How are you going to do that? I'm, I'm giving incentives to people. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of putting together, a, as a matter of fact, I'm leaving Monday to, to, to sign a, an agreement for a daily charter starting December to Guam. These are the things you need to do. They don't have any kind of resources. They're just using that as a guise to get more deep money. That's all it is. Their job should be to monitor themselves, lift up the brand of Guam USA, and work towards that. Leave GVB and the strategy and the expenditure to us. That's not their job. They, their they, job. they did say they, they, they have a commitment from United about over a million seats, but uh, let me work. Oh, uh, I did, but to no. what? And then they're going to ask me for the money? They're not negotiating anything with United. They have no resources to negotiate anything. Let, let me uh, bring in uh, Juan Carlos. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yes, my uh, pleasure. Good to see you. So I, I don't you, know, you know he's, a, he he's an honorary Republican. Yeah, right? I, I told so, him. I told you him. know, he was telling me that yeah, earlier. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> That's a departure for the, for the governor. Uh, no, but uh, did you, I don't know if you caught uh, any of the, the question, but I did ask the, the governor about um, the GHRA, GTTA uh, forum that was held earlier this week. And a couple of things that they were seeking was uh, an additional $36 million in uh, LEAP money and also more collaboration with uh, GVB. And you just heard his response. Do you have uh, any comments on that? Yeah, well, <clears throat> un unfortunately, I not, was not able to attend uh, their conference. They, they, they represent... Uh, key pillar of our economic industry, tourism, you know, and uh, the the LEAP program, uh, I was involved in, in sort of the concept, the, 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 I don't know if you know the reason for the need for the LEAP program was that the Hotel and Restaurant Relief Act of the United States provided basically 50% of all the restaurants needs, what they had, the shortfalls they had received during the pandemic to every single state in the nation. But when it came to the territories, they all got 15 to 5 percent. We were completely discriminated in this in in doing that process. And the Congressman San Nicolas and the Republican Party, we really chime on this. We would have loved the governor to come on board. Uh, she did not, uh, and instead she created this leap program with the expectation that there would be a second federal tranche of money to provide the other states their 50 percent and maybe get us from 15 to 30. Well, that bill died. That process did not move forward. And now you have businesses that when they had around $60 million worth of needs uh, are now trying to figure out, well, how do I get the rest of the money I lost during the pandemic? And the reality is they're looking now at the local coffers to do it again. They did it for a period, but that entire original process, the LEAP program was a gap measure until the federal relief came. So. We still need to figure out how we get parity on the treatment of the Restaurant Relief Act, which included also bars. 
Uh, and we also need to look at how we keep those industries alive. Uh, it's going to be hard. Well, uh, they can they can go and, and visit the governor as as they did last time they got the leap. Uh, as a matter of fact, GVB, Jerry Paris and I uh, 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 appeal to the governor to make sure that they people get leaped over we were in the middle of the pandemic mm -hmm. but and now I, I i understand that even all those 900 and some businesses that got leap money some of them had did not follow the the entire system of what what that leap was for so now they're very very careful about just putting enough pressure on the governor to give them more money without you know going back and and re analyzing what happened to the first leap and the first leap was not well uh, followed in, in, in protocols. Yeah. Well, well, my expectation is that there'll be some form of local relief. I think we, it, it would, I would love it to make sense that it works with the legislature and the governor in, in making sure the system's done correctly. But for the rest of it, we still need to look at the federal government. It's too much money for the local funds alone to bring them back to where they should be. Uh, and, and which brings me, uh, I, I sort of cut the tail end of what you were saying which was how do we get to going back to over 1 million tourists? And, and part of that is the offering, right? What is Guam offering? What are, what are people looking at? And uh, one area that we had really excelled was the culinary industry. We had created a worldwide recognized quality of, of uh, chefs from this island. And sadly, a lot of the restaurants closed. Kitchen Lingo for me was the epitome of the, of what where we were going for. And, and it is so sad to see that restaurant that business closed. It, it is now to the uh, Guam Visitors Bureau as well as the Hotel and Restaurant Association and, and, and the organizations to come up with, with how to rekindle and, and, and get that. Well, you know, Carlos, it's just now opening up. The source countries, Korea, Japan, Taiwan hasn't even opened up yet. The uh, Philippines have also been, been open and they brought in 104,000 mm -hmm. tourists. Uh, over the last year, but the source countries were the problem. It's not GVB. GVB made the best it could in in bringing these 400, uh, I mean 216,000 plus people with what little resources we had. Remember, there's no there's no money coming in so much on the tourist attraction fund. But Governor Lou Leongari came out and said, Governor. Take that ARP money, use $6.5 million, give incentives, give, it, give the testing, free testing, so we can have a program that nobody else in the industry has. We were the only ones that had that program. Koreans were coming in, and they were getting their, 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 their testing free of charge. And that's what brought them here. We were innovative. But don't, don't blame uh, the slowness. It was the source countries where the slowness is. And you're always making it look like we're not doing anything here. We're doing everything that we can. And, and like I said, I'm leading uh, Monday, and we're going to sign a daily uh, charter flight uh, from Korea to Japan to Guam. And that's going to start bringing in people. And uh, uh, I, I, I believe that the GVB, uh, through the help of Governor Lou Younger with, that, with those funds, believe me, those funds were easy. And she, she's going to make that whole. She's going to give it right back to us. So we can have our $20 million uh, in whole again to plan for future long-term goals that the GVB can, 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 can spearhead. I, I only hope she does. She will. Uh, she will. Uh, until January. No, I'm telling when, you she uh, will. She's Governor... not going to lie to me. Believe me, Carlos. Yeah. Juan Carlos. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure she will until January, and then hopefully we'll feel like Governor Felix Camacho. Felix not going to make country. it. He's about 35 points behind. Right. He's never going to make it. All right, let's, let, let's move on. In, 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 in related news, uh, uh, Governor, you recently came out on social media to, um, to respond or rebut uh, something that um, Senator Tony Adda um, had, had put out. Can you explain what that was about? Well, you know what? If you're running for the highest office in the land, and you go and read a report over here and criticize somebody over here. Like if, it, if you had a bank account at, at First Hawaiian Bank and then you moved it all over to Bank of Hawaii and suddenly you're criticizing there's a zero balance at the, at the first, at first Hawaiian Bank. That's what he did. He went and read a report that makes no sense at all. You've got to know how government runs if you want to be a lieutenant governor on this island. And you can't have this orchestrated thing, even including Mike and Nicholas, to make it look like there were no flights coming in, there were no tourists coming in, and we spent $20 million. Ha! Ah, 216,000 people came in. And I'll show you the graph where from, Janu from September 1st to January 24th, when the governor gave us those $6.5 million, we almost tripled the number of people coming in. That's how it, her, her plan worked. 
Do, are you familiar with the, the points that um, um, uh, Senator Adda was, was making in that? Right. Uh, the, Senator Adda, and the, and whereas referring to a report that was submitted by uh, BBMR, I hope I'm mispronouncing the, the letters, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, the Budget the, Bureau. The Lester Budget Carlson Bureau. Itself, yeah. uh, on the, his report of where the money for ARPA funding had been used. And in that money, it states that the account went from 20 million and says expended 20 million. Now, the, the BBRR should not say expended, should say transfer or provided. It was clarified by, 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 by the agency in the, in, the, in the media. It caused zero money to the taxpayer. Uh, in the meantime, I, I understand if you felt but that this was a personal that. attack against They went beyond that. You. They started attacking GVB for spending something they didn't know that it yeah. wasn't spent. So they I, went too far to politicize. It was cheap shot. It was fast and loose. And I had to go out there and tell the industry people that, that that's lie. Those, those are not, that's not true. The money is still there and the governor is going to make it whole and we're going to use some more as we proceed forward in getting more flights into Guam. And transparency is great and it's wonderful and the reports are, I see the report that you, you, that, that you guys provided on your financials now. I wish we could at some point get a more detailed outline of, of where the expenditures are doing and I appreciate that. There's, there's nothing wrong with getting the information. I am surprised at the amount of money that is being used to advertise a response that normally would have been on a press release. Ginger Cruz came in and said that we're paying uh, homeless to stay homeless on the street. You gotta be kidding me. But do we go and spend ads and do stuff about it? No, we don't. It's like you, you answer it, clarify it, it's done. Are you, you criticizing forward. the ads that I took out? I'm surprised. That's the only money. way that I could reach as many people as they reached when they criticized GVB. I had to go out there and get on the same forum, tell the people of Guam, uh, the, the, especially the members of GVB. They're, I'm responsible to them and the people of Guam. You can't tell me that I spent $20 million willy-nilly like that when it's not true. All right, Governor, we keep, we'll, we'll continue this conversation. <laughs> We've got to take a real quick break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, everybody. Stay on top of breaking news and the biggest stories of the day with NBC News Daily. Get in-depth reporting from across the country and around the world. Tips to take care of your health and your wallet. And up-to-the-minute local news. NBC News Daily, weekdays on NBC. Okay. All right, we're back. Uh, yeah. what, another another. Topic. All they could have done, you know, is apologize to me instead of coming back. Oh, I went to DVMR and I got these figures. You know, you got to know how government works for you to be leader of the government. All right. Let, let me get on to another topic, which which is also a little bit controversial. The Apal Beach Park, uh, um, state of the art park. Um, yeah. Uh, that's uh, one of the um, you know um, projects that you have in mind. Um, I think you've got yeah. twenty million. Or that's so. the, that's the twenty million. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's come under a, a bit well, of criticism. Well, let me tell you people, the status so. of that. Yeah. The governor was having a long-term vision and we wanted to do something with another tourist attraction instead of just Pleasure Island. Nothing has really changed since we put Pleasure Island together. And we thought about Epal Park being another center of attraction there for not only the tourists but for our people in moving the culture forward, moving the, those artists that are on top of the, the hill there and getting some parking for the people that are going to come into to, to Tumon again and, and, and using some, uh, you know, some kind of a monorail system. We're trying to figure out how to make it easier for our people to traverse the entire Tumon. Now, $20 million, the governor says, take it, put it into your account, and we're not gonna spend it, and that we were making studies of it. We, ha we, have some we had some pushback, and the pushback came from the fact that that is an archeological area that never been really comprehensively done. So out of that 20 million, I set aside, but it hasn't been spent because we haven't gotten the archeologists to come in to do a complete thorough analysis of our ancestors that are buried there because they didn't do that for the last 50 years. We're waiting for uh, the, the historic preservation people to come back if they got the, so that in the meantime, we have decided to, to re-go re down to the, the line of one, one attraction to one village. We're already doing that, so we're forgetting about Ipau for the time being. We're moving to one village, one one uh, attraction. We're working already with two villages, 
Petey and Inarahan. Inarahan has their act together. Petey it just got back the USO piece of property. And I went to Palau and I looked at how the Japanese donated to give the aquarium and to work all the all the undersea stuff like there because it balances out to the uh, to the fish fish eye down there. So even Tani is working with me on that. But that's what we're looking for. Now we're moving out to the villages. We're we're with we put us Ipo aside. So Ipo's aside now? Yes, I mean, Ipo's aside, yeah, Ipo's aside. What's your thoughts on that, Juan Carlos? Is that a good thing? To I, I'm, I'm, aside? I'm glad to hear that, because I, I think that there needs to be a lot more uh, public interaction on the decisions. That's our last public park in Tumon, and it's an area where a lot of the families continue to want to go and, and enjoy. Uh, I, I wish that in putting it aside, we still fix the bathrooms and fix some of it's the fixed. Place it's fixed. areas. And, and they're so they watching great. it, we're watching it eight yeah. times. And, and, and I'm glad to hear that. that so, yeah. but, uh, but going and looking more at the island as a whole island, it's, it's, it's wonderful for me. I, I really think that the tourism future for Guam is really stronger in ecotourism and historic preservation tourism. When, when you get a lot of people that want to come here and see the history of the Chamorro people through not only the Second World War, but through the entire history, uh, pre-colonial and post-colonial. So you, so you like yeah. the idea of, the, of what the, the governor said. That, would have, about. that yeah. would have been the center stage for that, all of that, and not only for the tourists, but for but, our people as well. And uh, it didn't go through. We're going to wait and see what the archaeological uh, archaeologists come up with. Because if there are census, are we, we going to keep them, are we uh, remain in situ, or, or are we going to rebury them? We're going to go through. That's a long process. In the meantime, we're going out to the villages. Uh, mayors are all involved with GVB now. They're so happy that finally tourism works for the people instead of, uh, you know, uh, uh, conflicted a few businesses that want the money to go to their hotels or their airlines and not go to the people. And these people actually fought me when I was going to give $95,000 for a, 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 a TV screen on in Inarahan, which is not only serve for tourism, but for the entire island on civil defense and, 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 and messages from the governor. So this is where now I think that the people of Guam are going to see a culture-centric uh, tourism uh, plan for Guam. Bring it back to when the first tourists came here in May 31st, 1967. 109 of them from, uh, from Japan on, on, on Pan American Airways. They came here because of the specialness of Guam. The real people of Guam, they love the culture, they love everything, the beauty of Guam. And now we have strayed away from that and I'm bringing it back to that thing again. That, the culture centric for the and what makes Guam very very special. Yeah, Real like, quick, like 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 I'm in, I I live in Agani Heights, so every time I, I pass to Duhan Park, and it's a shame the conditions that is in. It it needs to be fixed. I think going out and looking at our tourism areas outside of just Tuman is the way to go. But there needs to be the place for the community to be able to enjoy our best beach and most developed area in Guam. And keeping that for them and free is important. Yeah. Well, this is not going to change. Believe me, it's not going to change I'm for glad them. To hear it. Not for them. You, don't, you, you can change the the, the, the the makeup, but it's still going to be for the people of Guam to come yeah. there and enjoy it. When you have yeah. self-cleaning bathrooms, you have all these things available now. State of the art, 5G things where the kids can learn tomorrow and look at all these various things that that uh, we can put together. It's a great plan. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, we're going to wait, and make, we're going to wait. We're make, going to wait. Make sure it has a maintenance component really strong. Yeah, I'm telling it, you that you can uh, go there and just I, keep I've, that I've had a lot of go. electronics that no longer work. <laughs> <laughs> sit on the All right. Oh, well, well, you know, Docomo <laughs> might be involved, too, as, <laughs> as the anchor person. Are, are we so. going to get finally the statute of the, of the Pope? Move again, you know. It's I used to love to well, see that one. Know. I think that was your idea to bring it here, right? <laughs> let's let's. <laughs> I wish it was me because the Pope would have come for me. It would be awesome. Let's let's move on to a, a, another uh, pretty hot topic right now. Um, I think uh, maybe you have seen um, the public hearing that the speaker held at the legislature on a bill. Um, on, actually, it was an oversight hearing rather on um, the um, location for. Uh, the uh, proposed medical campus at Eagles Field, mm -hmm. and a lot of the um, uh, dozens of dozens of uh, la original landowners came out in in uh, opposition to that. Um, what are your thoughts on? Well, on, first on of their, all, I, I, as I as I because I was I was looking at that when I was governor as well, but the the, the military was not going to re return that, and but but if they're not going to use it, the governor's said, okay, then give me a 99-year lease on it, and I can use it for a campus. 
And, the, and, and I believe that they have said, yes, they will do that. In the meantime, the governor's looking for ways to compensate those original landowners that were there. They're all my relatives. Manny Chaudhat Cruz, that's my, my second cousin. So I, I feel for them, but the governor is not forgetting them. They're gonna figure out another way to, 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 to make that thing whole for them as well. So the governor's not heartless, but she's taking advantage of getting a 99 year lease from, from, from the military to hopefully put whatever she wants there, a campus that's going to serve the, the island well. Yeah. Well, Juan Carlos, what do you think? The, the original landowners want their land back. I mean, they're, they're aware of the governor's, um, you know, bill that would, you know, revamp the, uh, the land bank, but um, they, they really want the land back. They don't want compensation. They want their land back. I, I, I agree that the sentiment could not have been uh, made any clearer that it's not the money, it's the land. And uh, the part of it for me is the comments by the government, by the governor, that her interpretation of federal law was that they could not provide those lands back to the original landowners. I think that interpretation is completely wrong. And I'm being, and not, I'm being, not, not wrong. It's not wrong. It's just the fact that we did, we, we went outside of that law and the federal government did not step in to stop us on it. When they started giving uh, Harmon back to the to the people of Guam, the original landowners. Yeah. That was not supposed to be done, but we did it. I was governor when I started it. People got it, and uh, it's the same law that we're we're dealing with. But that now that the, the federal government stepping in and saying, guys, from now on you better watch it because it's supposed to be for economic purposes okay. only. It it so close, but I'll go by by parts also. Under Felix Cavacho, 90% of all the public lands that he had, he gave back to the original landowners. Uh, so that process was followed, started on his administration, continued to be followed. The federal government never came in and declared and took any other lands. What the law says is land will be returned to the local government for public interest. Is it in the public interest of the state to return those lands to its original landowners? I say yes. I think we have, we have an entire organization dedicated to return those lands to the original landowners. Now, never has a governor of Guam, including the sitting governor, asked the federal government to the question, would giving that to the Chamorro Land Trust, giving the land back to the Chamorro Land Trust to be returned to the original, would that be in public interest of the government of Guam? I wish they would. I know under yeah. Felix Camacho, we, we, we will and will continue to return and we will not use well, you know, you know, one, private land to have government business. Was Felix Camacho a part of, 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 of the cabal in the legislature that did away with the, the plan that I put together? It's already, it was law already, the Teach and Trust. Mm -hmm. A lot of hundreds of hundreds of families own land under the runway, under the terminal. And so I know that that would never been returned back to the people of Guam. Instead, we had created a teach and trust, and the federal uh, administration was going to give me $5 million. Before I turn over the, 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 the runways, I said, I'm going to do the teach and trust. You feed it with $5 million, and every year you put $5 million in there, and when we make any economic development, it's going to go in there for the people that didn't get their lands back so that their families can use it for school, for education, or, or however else they, uh, the the and Trust want to, to divide the money out to those people I, that never, got, that with, never get the land back. So, but you the, but it was but, your guys, but, uh, or Republicans <laughs> that went in there and zeroed oh, out and gave it to the right. landowner, and the next week they sold that property to, to the big business guys. Okay, okay. That's the kind of stuff that Felix was doing. Okay, hold, Juan Carlos, hold, hold that thought. Uh, we're gonna have to take a short break, and we'll be back with more of this discussion right after this presents the interview one-on-one -on -one with Nestor Lacanto, a Decision 2022 special to get through the issues, the platforms, and motivations of your candidates for governor. Nestor sits down for an in-depth discussion for voters to learn more before they head to the polls. It's an important conversation, giving each candidate the opportunity to explain why they are the best team to lead our island forward. Watch the interview one-on-one -on -one with Nestor Lacanto, broadcast premiere Monday, October 24th at 7 p.m. on TV8 and streaming on YouTube and Facebook. All right, we are back. And Juan Carlos, I think you wanted to respond to what uh, the governor had been saying. I, I'm, I'm just going to say 90% of the Guam lands under the Guam Ancestors Trust Commission inventory of land was returned to their original landowners under the Felix Camacho administration. 
Under Governor Carl Gutierrez's administration, he also returned land to the original landowners. We can do it. We should continue to do it. And to try to argue now that the federal, interpret federal law as saying that it, they're not allowed without having them specifically told you that you're not allowed, I think it's wrong. And, but and that if, land and if has that's not gonna, been returned. And if that's going to be the interpretation, Carlos, let her Juan ask. Carlos, that land has not been returned to the government of Guam. It's still in the hands of the military, so we're still and they're not going to let it go. And they told us that, and the governor said, well, if you're not going to let it go, then at least give me a lease long term so we can use it. Yeah. For the for the for the hospital and, and other uh, other uh, health related uh, uh, buildings there and services. That's what she did. Otherwise, that thing is not gonna. The, those landowners are not gonna get it's, so, their their so. land back. It's not gonna be returned. So don't don't play the games. But Lou has the authority. No, she doesn't have that property to return. The government has the federal government has not returned it to the governor of Guam. So they, don't confuse the the landowners. The federal government has not returned the land right. to Gov Guam. That's right. I agree that. That's a good point to this point. You're saying they're willing to give you a 99-year lease because they're not using the land. I think under Jim Moylan working in the Armed Services Committee as our next congressman, and with Felix Camacho as governor, we're going to work with the military, and we're going to make sure we get that land back to the original I think office. Governor Lewis got the best working relationship what, what, with the military. Believe you, me, she's in, in, in there herself to the USS Roosevelt and the, the, the entire, as I spoke with people in the military, she was like number one, number one in her books that she stands up for the military and will help us at any turn with the hotel, putting the, the COVID uh, infected people in the hotels and securing it with National Guard. She went out of her way. That's why she has endeared herself to the military. I don't know about Felix endearing himself anywhere. She, she, she went out of her way and then proceeded to say she was milking it. It's nothing I've ever been milked. And then she goes to the UN and sends speech after speech where she continues to say that the Department of Defense and the military is abusing our lands and are, and, and, are, and are treating the people in Guam in a discriminatory well, fashion. You, fight. you, you can different. You, you think that they don't read the same No, reports? but don't you think there's a strategy too to do those? Maybe you get more lands released. You start going over there and telling the story and suddenly right. it's going to take hold and maybe the military says, oh my God, let's, not, let's stop this bad publicity. Let's yeah. give them more Sorry. land. And, and, it's and, not a, about uh, unpatriotic that she's doing it. It's a strategy to get more land back. And, and, uh, and about the relationship, the entire original buildup was done under Felix Camacho. It could have happened without him, believe me. It could have been somebody oh, in that it, thing. It, it, could, have been, it that. could have been you, but it wasn't. It was him. Because and he of the change to the indo pac kind of strategy. What, are, what, are, what, are what is up with you, the... you guys, man, that you spin this thing so much so that it doesn't make sense to anybody? What are your the thoughts governor, on the, the governor's I, land I, bank I, bill, I, Juan I, Carlos? I'm, I'm not even close to the way that you are. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on the governor's land bank uh, reform bill? Um, it, that's her alternative to to not yes. being able to give the land back. Yes, I think you, you before you go there, you, you need to clarify because the entire idea of her land back is based on the premise that you cannot give the land back to the Chamorro Land Trust, which I think is wrong. I, they interpret it, it's, it's happened not only here, it's happened with the Navajo Nation, it's happened with other per, parts of the United States where the federal government has given the land back to entities like the tribes and then proceeded to pro provide those those entities then have assigned it down but it's make, not the federal government who does it the, it's sort of like a little dance right it is the person that needs to determine that it's in the best interest of the people of that group is the group in this case it's our governor and our governor could say that she thinks it is the best interest of the people of guam to transfer those lands to the chamorro land they should, they're not going to transfer it you don't understand that the land is not going to be transferred to the government well, why of guam. don't we ask we did and they Where said they'll it? keep it for 99 years. Yeah. The governor says, well, then let me use it for 99 years if you're not going to return it. That's what it is. You're, you're confusing the people that you think the land is in the governor's hands. It's not. Okay, it's I think, still in the, in the military's hands and the federal government. All right, let's move on. I think you guys have both made your, your points and uh, agree to disagree at this point. Uh, let's talk about a bigger issue, which is the insular cases and the Supreme Court's uh, refusal to hear that, despite what uh, Neil Weir has been trying to do with Equally American. First of all, uh, as a lawyer, what, what are your thoughts on that? It, it was not unexpected, I don't think, right, that they would decline to, to hear those cases? It, w it was the wrong case. 
it, it, that case should have never even been brought up to that level, even lost at the circuit level. I think uh, Neil saw the comment of one justice of the Supreme Court and tried to interpret that as uh, I can add it to any case and it'll work. Has, any, has anybody ever brought that whole situation of the insular cases to the Supreme Court for everybody to see that something maybe is wrong and that Congress, who has plenary power over the territories, will step in now and say, okay, let's fix this thing. It only can happen in, the, in Congress. But Neil brought it all the way where everybody can see it in the light of day and night with that, you know, that, what do you call that, the do you know Washington what the case Monument? Was? What was the case about? It was your Puerto Rican stuff and no, the it oranges. Was not. Your no, oranges. It was not. Well, no, the 1902 one. His yeah. case right now is that he brought up is a case of an American Samoa yeah. living in the mainland United States. Oh no, States. I'm talking about the insular cases. So no, so it has to so, do with your oranges, right? So 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 we'll we'll go by parts. First part is it was a wrong case. The Vallejo case was a really good case. That was the SSI benefits being denied to the people that reside in the territories. Uh, there was a local case. Unfortunately, the victims died. Yeah. Us, Both yeah. victims died. I, 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 that case was perfect to try to address the concerns and the issues. But let's look at the insular cases itself. Not the language surrounding it, but what it purports to do or say. It allows a different treatment, a supposedly more beneficial treatment to U.S. territories as they transition into statehood or independence. You need to create an economy. So it, you get the federal laws and you're supposed to give some assistance in the way that they, some humanity in the way that they interact. Unfortunately, Congress has used it in a discriminatory manner year yeah. after year, Democrat or Republican. They have used it. That's what well, we should what? condemn. That's what we should look at. But if we repeal the insular case doctrine altogether by the Supreme Court, Do you think the, the Chaboro Land Trust doesn't exist. Article 12 disappears. Section 30 funds stop being coming to the island. That's what I was going to ask if there are in, any implications for... Huge. Well, no, this, listen, you guys are missing the boat. You're saying all these things are going to befall on Guam if the insular cases were overturned. You don't know. Congress still has the plenary power. And the fact that it went to, to, to the Supreme Court and got turned down, I think that's victory in itself that it got it that kind of a publicity. So, now the, 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 the you know, Congress, who has plenary power over the territories, will still to start looking and saying, Governor Lu Leon Guerrero, let's sit down and see what we can do for Guam. I know that they gave the Northern Marianas SSI because it was part of the agreement for their covenant. And, uh, and, and Jerry Ford, in his memo that the Department of Interior, I think it was a Puerto Rican that was the, the, the insular affairs guy, hid it in the, in the safe for 30 years that says you must treat Guam the same way that you treat Northern Marianas in their covenant. It's there too for the SSI to come in, but they hid it until it was 30 years later. It, it was, first of all, it was George W. Bush, uh, the father. Herbert no, it was Bush. Jerry. Jerry Ford yeah, was the one that had me, it. Please, it was Ford. Yeah, find me the letter. I, 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 listen, I'm 81 years old. I, I, I'm older no than problem. him. But, right. he, but here, here's the Real thing. Real quick. Okay. We're, we're mixing two cases. No. The Vallejo no, case. No, no. I'm forgetting which, about the case. I'm, for, I'm talking about the issue being highlighted to the point where now everybody's looking at the problem with the territories. But the Let's case, fix it. That's the, what it is okay, now. So Neil's word case did not go to the Supreme Court. But the Supreme it, Court denied it. Yes, in, but everybody heard the denial. No. The Vallejo case, which happened six months earlier, went to the Supreme Court, got a hearing, addressed the issue. That's where Judge Justice Gorsuch came in and made the statement. The problem was that Neil tried to push it on an yeah. American Samoa case that was not the right case. It doesn't matter. Do it. it doesn't matter. It, does. it shows the disparity of how territories are mistreated yeah. differently from the states. They, that was the issue. For me, that's why I put yeah. an amic amicus brief in there to yeah. highlight this thing. And, and Whether we win or lose, it highlighted and, it for Congress to take a look at it. Now they should step in uh, on their and, plenary okay. power. President yep. Biden right. stated <laughs> that he would not appeal the case, and then he not only appealed one, he appealed both. I wish we had, had more time. Keep, we had, keep we bringing had, the issue up to the <laughs> that's like every day. That's what we need to do. Right. Tell everybody every day about it because Governor, somebody's going to do something about thank it. Thank you so much. Yep. Oh, Always a pleasure. Juan yeah. Carlos, thank you also for your no participation. Problem. We're out of time, folks. We, uh, gonna take a, we're going to close out now, and we'll see you again next week on The Hub. Thanks thank for you. watching.